Hello. Hello. <laughs> um. What did I say? Oh, I know how to start. What's up, superhero? Superman Adam 100 here, and welcome to something a little different today. <laughs> Oh no, I don't need my I don't need my camera for this. Alright. All I need is me. My voice. Um if you're hearing some noise in the background, that's my fan. But for today's vlog, I'm gonna be covering the entire psycho series from start to finish. Now, if you guys are fans of the Jugger Nuggets like I am you pretty much know the entire Psycho series was fake. It was all staged. The, uh, the destructions were really 100% real, but the story behind it and all the other stuff that happened was all fake. Like the mom getting divorced and leaving and then Jeffrey moving out and Jesse killing Psycho Dad and all that stuff. All that was fake. So, I found this uh, Wikipedia page where it had the entire Psycho series, it had everything that happened in between, so I wrote it all down. It's ten pages long, so we're probably going to be here for a while, you guys. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. It's probably going to be a pretty long vlog. But, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, my fellow superheroes, let's begin. So, the episodes in the Psycho series and the vlogs which accompany them occur in sequential order to the YouTube videos. The events take place between December 22nd, 2012 and June 6, 2016. So let's start off with the introduction. These events occur before the series and in the earlier moments leading up to the series. Jesse's channel begins to grow slowly. Psycho Dad begins to grow affectionate to the TV in the living room. He reminds Jeffrey and Jesse that they aren't allowed to use it under any circumstances, but they often ignore this. Excuse me. Jeffrey is prepared to film Dad's next flip out as a prank to humiliate Jesse's McJugger Nuggets channel. Psycho Dad returns one evening after work to find Jesse using the TV, so he burns and throws Jesse's Xbox 360, destroying it in the process. Psycho Dad destroys Xbox. Jesse learns that Psycho Dad destroys Xbox has been uploaded and threatens Jeffrey to tell their father about it for some time. A year later, Jeffrey has gotten sick of Jesse's blackmailing and pranks him by beginning a shootout with his friends and destroying his camera in the process as an act of revenge for his humiliation. And that was Psycho Brothers Filming Freakout, which was first called, it was originally called Psycho Brothers Shatters Camera. But then he later changed it to Psycho Brothers Filming Freakout. Jesse then becomes annoyed at his broken possessions. He attempts to gain revenge by showing Psycho Dad the Psycho videos, which results in the destruction of Jeffrey's laptop. He then forces Jesse to show it to Jeffrey, which results in a chase. And that is Psycho Dad acts his laptop. Jesse has grown long hair ever since, so Jeffrey pranks him by cutting his hair off in his sleep. Which is Psycho Brother Clip's head. Now starts the job concern. Psycho Dad becomes very concerned that Jesse needs to find a job and stop playing video games after he graduates from college. Psycho Dad becomes concerned about Jesse's future. He eventually comes to the conclusion that the video games are the main reason why Jesse will not get a job. Jesse comes home one day to find all his video games have been taken out of their cases and put on the lawn. A message reading, get a job, get a life, no more games, dad, is written on Jesse's whiteboard. Psycho Dad shreds the video games with a lawnmower as Jesse refuses to admit that he hasn't gotten a decent job. And that was Psycho Dad shreds video games. After this, Jesse invites his friend Buzz to the house to do some YouTube videos. Jesse was grounded from video games for two weeks after, at the time by Psycho Dad for refusing to find a job outside of YouTube. Buzz brings the Game Boy Advance SP along, which is tossed on the floor but not destroyed by Psycho Dad. Jesse gets enraged and smashes Psycho Dad's beloved TV. 
Psycho Dad kicks Jesse out of the house for the night and goes to Buzz's home. He was presumably grounded for an extended period of time. Jesse then acquires another Xbox 360. However, he knows he cannot play it because he is grounded until he applies for a job. Therefore, he moves into the Morton building to, sne to sneak it from his dad. <sighs> Sorry, I felt a sneeze. I moved the microphone so that I wouldn't sneeze right into the camera and have it be loud. Jeffrey finds out about his video game stash while Jesse is taking a dump <laughs> and tells Psycho Dad after Jesse returns. He soon catches Jesse off guard and throws his Xbox into the pool. And that was Psycho Dad drowns Xbox. Jesse decides to search for a job and gets an interview. This is just to make his dad happy. So after driving home, Psycho Dad discovers that he had previously repaired the Xbox. He took some of his mom's money, so he decides to destroy, to destroy Jesse's car obliging him to pay for the damage. Psycho Dad wrecks car. Well, that part didn't actually explain it, so basically, Psycho Dad threw the Xbox through the back, uh, through the back window, he smashes out all the windows and the lights and everything, and then he drives it away. He forces Jesse to give him the keys, and then he drives it away, a few feet away from where Jesse was first standing with Psycho Dad, and as Psycho Dad grabs a log, and smashes it down on the front windshield and breaks it. So soon after this, Jesse acquires an Xbox One. Halloween is approaching, so Psycho Dad, Jeffrey, and Jesse's friend Corn play a prank on Jesse by squirting him with ketchup and scaring him with a chainsaw. That was Psycho Kid's Halloween bloodbath. That one was actually disgusting. <clears throat> Jesse gains revenge by doing the same to his parents. However, he forgets to remove the blades from the chainsaw, making it a rather dangerous prank. They get concerned that eventually Psycho Dad blames the video games for teaching Jesse the violence, that probably chainsaws and sledgehammers the Xbox One. Actually, they called that Psycho Dad Chainsaws Xbox One, but I would actually much rather, much rather would have made sense if they called it Psycho Dad Sledgehammers Xbox One because the sledgehammer is what actually did the damage. They call this Psycho Dad Chainsaw's Xbox One, but if you watch the video, the chainsaw doesn't do anything. The chainsaw doesn't do anything, and the Xbox probably still would have worked. Because the chainsaw didn't even go through the Xbox. Them titling it Psycho Dad Chainsaw's Xbox One makes it sound like Psycho Dad used a chainsaw and it went and went straight through the Xbox, but it didn't. It just cut off little plastic pieces. So it should have been called Psycho Dad Sledgehammer's Xbox One because the sledgehammer is what did the most damage. Psycho Dad just picks it up and boom. So I, that's my opinion. It, it, I, I thought it w I figured it'd be more appropriate if they called it. <coughs> excuse me. If they called it Psycho Dad Sledgehammer's Xbox One because the chainsaw didn't do anything. So now the family begins to have massive preparations for this Thanksgiving feast. Many friends are invited out for Thanksgiving, and eventually Psycho Dad begins humiliating Jesse, causing Jesse to have a, to go into a fit of rage, flip a table, and embarrass the family. That was Psycho Kid ruins Thanksgiving. And by the way, Jesse was on the news last night, and it was hyped up to be some big thing. Like, oh my God, he's gonna be on the news, and it's gonna be like an interview or something. But no, it was only like two minutes, and they just showed. One little tiny clip from Psycho Kid Ruins Thanksgiving, so it was a big bummer, big waste of time. <clears throat> Jesse then apologizes, which is not taken lightly when he talks to his psycho dad. And that is Psycho Family Apology. It is agreed that Jesse will not receive any major presents for Christmas due to his faults. Jesse is jealous on Christmas Day when he notices that he only received reindeer ears and Jeffrey received an Xbox One that he didn't even ask for. Ask for. He then burns the Christmas tree, resulting in a chase with his psycho father. And that was Psycho Kid Torture's Christmas tree. Jesse's mom gives him a Wii U without Psycho Dad knowing. 
Shortly after, Jesse celebrates 100,000 subscribers and receives a YouTube Silver Play button. And then this is Jeffrey's antagonizing. This is when Jeffrey's antagonizing starts. This is the point where Jeffrey begins to manipulate Psycho Dad so Jesse can lose more possessions. Although Psycho Dad still feels as if Jesse needs to get a job, Jeffrey is the primary reason why any further Psycho videos occur and therefore the main antagonist. Jesse decides to stream Minecraft using Jeffrey's Xbox One. Jeffrey eventually finds out and while angered informs Psycho Dad as Jesse starts to insult him on the stream. This causes Psycho Dad to smash Jesse's monitor. Jesse has a freak out unaware he is doing so in front of his stream, which is still running. He then proves to the audience that the Psycho videos are real, except for those Jeffrey sets up, but the reactions are still unstaged. And that was Psycho Dad Rage Stream. Jeffrey discovers the silver play button and is jealous of the fact that it was received by Jesse as he filmed most of the Psycho videos, which are the primary reason why the Majugger Nuggets channel is as popular as it is. So Jesse then gains revenge on Jeffrey again by filming his breakup with his girlfriend Kate, which we later found out her name wasn't Kate, her name was Shaban. Uh, resulting in the destruction of an iPad, which is later to be revealed as an Android tablet. And that was Psycho Girlfriend Breaks iPad. Jesse celebrates 500,000 subscribers by doing a video showcasing a household celebration. However, Jeffrey runs off with the silver play button. They arouse their psycho dad, who destroys the trophy to end the conflict. Both Jesse and Jeffrey are devastated. Psycho Dad shatters YouTube play button. Jesse and Psycho Dad are invited onto the British TV show Virtually Famous. They travel to London, where they are recorded for the show. After the show, Psycho Dad destroys and soaks Jesse's Nintendo DS as he has been overusing it during the trip. And that is Psycho Dad pounds Nintendo DS. One, one part that I thought was funny is you get to see sort of a moment where you have, where you have Psycho Dad holding the camera. I mean, you actually got that type of moment in uh, Psycho Dad Axe's laptop. Because right after Psycho Dad destroys the laptop with the axe, Jeffrey, uh, Jesse's sitting there recording it. And right after Psycho Dad finishes axing the laptop, he grabs the camera out of Jesse's hands and he's recording Jesse as he's like forcing Jesse to, to pick up the scraps from the laptop and go show it to Jeffrey. So there, that was two different times where you got, uh, you actually got to see the man himself behind the camera. And he actually recorded, Psycho Dad actually was still holding the camera when he destroyed the Nintendo. He he recorded his own destruction. So that part was kind of funny also, because it's like a first person reaction. I think the funniest thing is they're just getting ready to board the airplane and Psycho Dad looks at Jesse and like, why are you wearing that? You look like a freaking slob and Jesse's like, hmm, looks better than anything you'll ever wear. <laughs> And then there's another part where they first get on the plane and Jesse is like, here, hold this. And he gives Psycho Dad the camera and has Psycho Dad hold the camera so he can sit there and play his video games. Upon their return to the United States, Jeffrey pranks Jesse by interrupting his Wii U gaming session by informing him that a new play button has arrived. He locks him out of the house once he leaves and will not let him back in until he takes his clothes off and makes a snow angel. Mom eventually lets him back in. And this was Psycho Brothers Frozen Lockout. One thing that most of you probably won't know about this, which I actually didn't know about until the end of the series with that. This video actually got re-uploaded. It was uploaded on a completely different date. Then Jesse deleted it, and then he re-uploaded it. Mark and Korn, which um, they haven't explained Mark yet. Mark is another one of Jesse's friends. Uh, decided to have a, They decided to have a LAN party at Jesse's house, which LAN is like World of Warcraft. They suspect the things coming, so they bring low-end laptops. As Jeffrey invades the party late at night, Psycho Dad is woken up, argues with Jesse for waking him up, and flips the table when Jesse calls him crazy, destroying all the laptops on it. Corrin is not seen again in the Big Jugger Nuggets video for quite some time after this. And that was Psycho Dad Crashes Wild Land Party. This is Exile. This was the first time that Jesse... This is when Jesse first got kicked out of the house. 
So Jesse is eventually kicked out of his house. Therefore, his YouTube videos are almost exclusively vlogs uploaded via Jeffrey's laptop during their stay at Eagles Landing and by other means. This is actually when the McJugger Nuggets daily upload started, was when he got kicked out, kicked out, and had to start living in Eagles Landing. <clears throat> Jeffrey and Jesse agree to smash some of Psycho Dad's childhood trophies as revenge for the destruction of their play button and other electronics. Jesse eventually confronts Psycho Dad and does this. Psycho Dad grabs Jesse's Ryu as Jesse refused to lock Jesse's bedroom door and grills it straight through. Jesse flips the grill in retaliation, causing conflict from his parents. Jesse is instantly kicked out of the house. Psycho Dad grills Ryu. One thing I actually like about this one is this is the first time where you actually have to, we actually get to see Jeffrey, who's sort of on Jesse's side for once, instead of like being trying to be the main reason why the psycho videos are going to occur. He eventually becomes an asshole again afterwards, but this was the first time you actually got to see him actually like on Jesse's side, feeling as if it's fucked up. He's, uh, he's, he's as he's just been kicked out of his own house. Actually, in Psycho Dad Grills Wii U, you see the moment Jeffrey notices that Psycho Dad's grabbing the Wii U, the Wii U console, and he grab he actually grabs the Wii U gamepad and hides it in the cushions of um, Jesse's couch that was in his bedroom, so that Psycho Dad wouldn't see that as well. <clears throat> so, because if Psycho Dad would have saw that, he definitely would have destroyed that too. The thing that's funny about that video is when <laughs> Psycho Dad first walks into Jesse's room. Jesse looks at the camera and he looks at Jeffrey and he goes, I thought you locked the door. And Jeffrey's like, why would I lock your door? <laughs> Jesse spends the night in the, Morton, in the Morton building with supplies given to him by his mother and Jeffrey. Uh, Jesse sets up a tent he calls Eagle's Landing in the backyard hoping Psycho Dad won't flip out. He eventually grabs electronics and powers his tent. Jesse does a supply run into the house to grab Skyrim to play on, on his new Xbox One, L360. Psycho Dad nearly finds him thanks to Jeffrey attempting to give him away. Like, see, like I just said before, he was on Jesse's side for a little bit and then he became an asshole again? Yeah, right there. Jesse eventually does another supply run to prank Psycho Dad, and he discovers the tent, but he doesn't care. Jesse is then called out by Psycho Dad to warn him of his actions, destroying his microphone in the process, which that was actually a vlog, which was called the warning shot. Uh, Jesse then lights a campfire as a prank and receives a letter from Psycho Dad that his electricity has been cut and that he should consider staying at a friend's house. And that was a vlog called Message from Psycho Dad. Jesse, after viewing on Twitter what he should do, plugs in the cord, plugs in the cord to his tent using the house's power. I don't know why he did that, because the big mistake comes next. The next day, Psycho Dad finds that Jesse disobeyed his order to not use the electricity, so he runs over Eagle's Landing with a backhoe, destroying all the electronics and Jeffrey's laptop in the process. Which is Psycho Dad Platinum's Gaming Lair. That is also the day that Jeffrey created his own YouTube channel called Big Rudda. Jesse then relocates to his friend Zach's house temporarily. He then decides to move to Pennsylvania to live with his girlfriend, Juliet. Around this time, he acquires a Super Nintendo Entertainment System, the SNES. He then relocates to his Uncle Larry's house upon recommendation from his followers on Twitter. He does not mind Jesse's gaming addiction. Yeah, this was around the time that Uncle Larry got introduced into the videos and stuff, and now Uncle Larry is gone. He left YouTube. Uncle Larry then receives a voicemail from Psycho Dad outlining that he needs to get a job. Oh, that's Jesse. And that was a vlog called Voicemail from Psycho Dad. So Jesse then sets up Phoenix Landing, a second gaming layer. Jesse steals some of Larry's Coronas, and Larry later confronts him about this. Psycho Dad then visits Larry, who is trying to hide Jesse in the house. Jesse becomes suspicious that he is scheming things. Jesse and Larry agree to put an end to Psycho Dad's plot. And that was a vlog called Psycho Dad Surprise Visit. Uh, Jesse finds that his cousin Tom had informed Psycho Dad that he has relocated to Larry's house. I can confront him about this. And I think that vlog was called Confronting Tom. Jeffrey smashes more trophies on Psycho Dad's lawn to frame Jesse. 
He also initiates a paintball prank, which was reversed by Jesse as he has seen the video. Uh, Psycho Dad storms into Larry's house and they have a big fight after Psycho Dad destroys a fold-up chair and a DS light. Jesse received in fan mail. Jesse is then allowed in the RV, which is heavily guarded from Psycho Dad. And that was Psycho Dad fights Uncle Larry. And this was the first altercation between uh, Psycho Dad and Uncle Larry before the really big fight that they had in the vlog called Custody Battle, which was right after Psycho Dad destroyed the RV. I just want to point out some of my Psycho Power Strip videos actually got deleted. And I don't know what happened, and I don't have the files for the videos that got deleted. I don't have them anymore, so the, the ones that got deleted are gone forever. So I apologize for that, you guys, but for those of you who liked that series, I apologize for that. But, um, yeah, me doing this just reminded me of that, that some of them actually got deleted. Uh, Jeffrey's YouTube channel is hacked by a juggie posing as a member of the internet activist group Anonymous. Later, it was revealed that it truly was Anonymous that hacked his account. Nah. Jesse celebrates one million subscribers. I remember the day he hit a million. Uh, Larry and Tom are actually excited. <clears throat> Jeffrey graffitis the RV, believing it was Jesse that hacked the Big Brother channel. A few days later, Jeffrey returns to Larry's house, locks Jesse inside the RV, and drives the RV off to Psycho Dad's house, again in retaliation for the hacking of his YouTube. Jesse shows Psycho Dad a message he put together explaining that YouTube can earn him money. He also shows him that Jeffrey was the one that destroyed the trophies despite the video being deleted in the hacking. He smashes Jeffrey's most expensive camera and gets mad at him for setting everything up. Oh, I didn't even put, hold on. I didn't put the title of the video there. Let me put that there. That is Psycho Dad. Psycho Dad reacts to one million juggies? Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, I'm going to pause the recording really quickly to see if I put the right um, title for that video. Okay, so I did put the right um, title. It's Psycho Dad Reacts to One Million Juggies. Now, another thing that I didn't know until the end was that there was actually seasons. There were separate seasons of the Psycho series. So, Psycho Dad Reacts to One Million Juggies was actually the final episode of season one and season one ended with Jesse being allowed back into his house. So this is now the return to the Ridgeway residence. <clears throat> uh, these events take place after Jesse is allowed back in his home. The family goes to a wedding where Psycho Dad and Larry argue once again over Jeffrey's dangerous prank. And Jeff Jesse and some friends play basketball with Larry. Oh, here we go with this one. On May 5th, 2015, Jesse returns to streaming. However, the first stream that he makes, involving him and Juliet playing Grand Theft Auto V, is shut down by various DDoS attacks, and later, the same, the same individuals who DDoSed him get his address. They frame Jesse for killing and torturing his parents, and a SWAT team intervenes. The next day, Jesse makes a vlog calling out the prankers. Jesse finds mowing the lawn rather hard, but Psycho Dad thinks he's just lazy and threatens him with exile once more. They didn't explain that. But the agreement that Jesse made with Psycho Dad was that if he worked for Psycho Dad without getting prayed, if he worked for Psycho Dad for free, Psycho Dad would let him back in the house and Jesse agreed. Later in the day, he gets home from a friend sorting fan mail, which was actually Corin's sister, Beth. That's actually a vlog. If you look on it, there's a vlog there called Beth the Mail Sorter. That's who it was. Jesse has, Mother Day, has Mother's Day brunch with his mom, which they both enjoy immensely. Jesse tries to do another stream, but is forced to end it early because of another DDoS attack. 
Jesse provides an update on his life after being allowed back home and visits Uncle Larry and Tom. Jesse revives an angry nerd character from some of his earlier videos for an unboxing video of a PS4 he received in fan mail, and later makes a video clearing up any confusion by fans who thought he hated the PS4. Ugh. Excuse me, I just farted. A major argument between Jesse and Juliet takes place, but they remain together. In addition, Psycho Dad gets mad at him for not being around on Wednesday for lawn mowing. That was actually a vlog called Psycho Relationship Problems. Jesse mocks some of the many hate comments on his videos. There's three of those, but this was the first one called Jesse Responds to Hate Comments. So, arrest and return to Larry's. Psycho Dad has Jesse and Jeffrey mow nine lawns. While, the, while on the way, they pick up 12 bags of fertilizer. Psycho Dad tasks the boys with loading them onto the van. While Jesse helps out, Jeffrey, possibly seeking revenge for his destroyed camera, starts videotaping him with the camera Jesse had bought. Jesse sees this and loses it, starting a, lar starting a large argument with Jeffrey and Psycho Dad, with Jesse losing it even more and knocking things to the ground. Jesse is then arrested by a police officer. Psycho Kid gets arrested. Now, remember how I said before that the Psycho series was split into seasons. There was three seasons. Uh, season one ended with Psycho Dad reacts to one million juggies. Psycho Kid Gets Arrested was actually the beginning of Season 2, so right now we're in Season 2 of the Psycho series. It is revealed that the police officer was a friend of Psycho Dad's who was hired by him and Jeffrey to scare Jesse to teach him a lesson. After being released the following day, Uncle Larry picked up Jesse from the police station. Jesse, regretful of, regretful of his actions, decides to stay at Uncle Larry's house to talk it off and apologize. Uncle Larry says that if Jeffrey ever, not Jeffrey, that if Jesse ever wants to take a break from his family, he is welcome to come to him. Jesse later says he is not officially kicked out of the house, but he just needs to get away, knowing very well what his dad, um, excuse me, knowing very well what his dad will likely do. <coughs> the same day, Uncle Larry starts his own channel called Larry's Lounge, which is no longer available. Well, the videos are still there, but it's now called 620. And it's now a channel that Tom and his friends do. The second return to the Ridgeway household. The day after Memorial Day, having decided that he has spent enough time away from his home, Jesse thanks Uncle Larry and returns to the Ridgeway household. Upon entry, he finds that Jeffrey earned his silver play button for his Big Brother channel. Jesse senses that Jeffrey is acting strange and that something isn't right. Later that evening, Psycho Dad returns home with Jesse's monthly rent, which totals up to $830. $365 of which comes from his rage at the hardware store. He later negotiates with his father, and he says that if he offers a sincere apology to the person at the hardware store, the $365 would be a move from his rent pay. Psycho Dad also tells Jesse that if he records it, that's a video that he wants to see. Which, that was another thing I didn't explain. Another agreement that Jesse made with Psycho Dad that allowed him to be back into the house after he got kicked out was that he was going to start paying rent. Jesse apologizes to the hardware store people, but is told that the woman seen calling the cops in the video named Joan didn't actually call. Uh, you actually see it. You can see... And Psycho Kid gets arrested, you see a lady in the background. She she's like standing up but she notices exactly that Je that Jesse's like breaking all the stuff and he just like she just grabs the phone and is holding it. You could actually see it in the background of the video, but she didn't actually she didn't actually call the cops. <clears throat> And Psycho Kid Gets Arrested was actually the first video to be revealed as fake. Jesse apologizes to the hardware store people, but is told that the woman seen calling the cops, Joan, didn't actually call the cops. He questions Psycho Dad about this, who does not answer the question, but takes the $365 off of the rent bill. His mom then tells him that it was a scared straight sort of deal, with the intent of teaching Jesse a lesson. But unsurprisingly, Jesse is very angry and on the verge of tears that his family would do this to him. His mom then says she will schedule a family therapy session with Dr. Nelson, which was Jesse's like therapist or some shit. 
The Ridgeway family goes to therapy, but they make no progress as Jesse goes into a rage when Dr. Nelson suggests that Jesse stop playing video games, and Psycho Dad agrees. In a later update, Jesse states that as a result of this session, he no longer has to do free labor for his Psycho Dad. This actually went down as one of the longest Psycho videos ever. This was, fu this was during Psycho Family Therapy, and this was like the longest Psycho series video. This was the longest Psycho episode ever. It was like 36 minutes long. It was the longest shit. <coughs> Uh, Jesse finally manages to do a stream without a DDoS attack. It is not long before Psycho Dad discovers Psycho Dad t-shirts that were made by Jesse. Enraged that Psycho Dad, enraged that Jesse has once again disrespected him behind his back, he gets the same back how he used to flatten Eagle's Landing and buries Jesse's video games and some of the shirts in a hole that he carved out. Jesse manages to save some of his video games but almost gets buried in the dirt in the process. That was Psycho Dad Barry's video games, and this was the f this was the time of the all-out prank war between Jesse and Jeffrey. Several weeks later, Jesse passes off the play button shattered by Psycho Dad as Jeffrey's play button, and while wearing a Master Chief helmet and tie, <coughs> smashes the award with the hammer. Two days later, Jeffrey sees the video, and after bribing Corn with a hundred dollars. Plot to destroy Jeffy's flat screen, Jesse's flat screen television with his paintball gun. He goes through with it even after Jesse returns Je Je after Jesse returns Jeffrey's actual intact award, sending Jesse into a rage. Any effort by Jesse to tell his parents is met. What's up with that telling Jesse that he doesn't want to get involved? and then gives him the bill for the month with an extra charge for the botched therapy session with Dr. Nelson. Jesse then begins planning revenge. <coughs> Jesse has a phone call conversation with Michael Green. Kid behind a camera. <coughs> While filming a Kung Fu skit with Uncle Larry, Jeffrey gets extremely unhappy with his role and quits, violating a deal they made. Larry, as a result, bans Jeffrey from going on the family trip to North Carolina and is forced to recast the role. And that is in Psycho Brothers Kung Fu Freakout. Now, the one where Jeffrey destroyed Jesse's TV with the paintball gun was actually called, was actually uploaded on the Big Brother channel. But it was called, like, McJugger Nuggets TV Paintball Destruction. You know, something like that. And there was a video on Jesse's channel talking about it, but it was like a psycho update. While the rest of the family is on vacation, Jeff Jeffrey, believing that the filming of the Kung Fu sketch was one big prank in retaliation by the destruction of Jesse's TV, burns Jesse's Master Chief helmet. He tells everyone to tweet Jesse to see the video as soon as possible. Sure enough, it is long before Jesse sees the video and after the flood of tweets he received. Devastated and outraged, he is puzzled whether to, prete to pretend this never happened or yell at Jeffrey when he gets back home. And the, the the burning of the Master Chief Helmet was also on Jeffrey's channel called Master Chief Helmet Destruction. Yeah. And J Jesse's video reacting to it was called Make Jargon Nuggets Reacts to Halo Helmet Destruction. <coughs> By Jeffrey post a vlog stating that the helmet's destruction didn't elicit what he wanted. An apology from Jesse and Larry. <clears throat> he then asked the viewers what they want him to destroy next, before deciding and choosing a certain number of objects based on the vlog's views, as well as promising he would review Batman Arkham Knight after the Batgirl DLC is released. Many were not amused by his self-entitled behavior and portraying himself as the victim of a prank when really, Jeffrey is being totally unreasonable and worthy of his main antagonist level. 
During sundown on the first day of vacation, Jesse, Larry, Psycho Dad, and Mom go outside on the balcony to sit down and discuss Larry's decision to ban Jeffrey from the North Carolina vacation. Larry starts by stating how it was all just a skit and how he, Jesse, and Jeffrey made an agreement. Larry would take care of the dogs on the 4th of July in exchange for the boys being in Larry's skit. Psycho Dad says he understands the deal but thinks that Jeffrey should have been given a different costume. He goes further to state that maybe Larry should have cut Jeffrey some slack since this was a family vacation they had been doing for years. However, Larry states how Jeffrey wouldn't apologize for his rage and at the end got Larry mad. Um, Mom reminds everyone that it takes a lot to get Larry mad. After a long talk, Larry and Psycho Dad agree that they'll talk to Jeffrey when they return home. But Jeffrey does indeed owe Larry and Jesse an apology. After Psycho Dad and Mom go back inside, Jesse and Larry stay outside. They both agree that Jeffrey needs to apologize, but Larry is concerned about what Jeffrey might do later on or what the latter is plotting. Jesse informs Larry that Jeffrey has already gotten started on revenge by burning one of Jesse's Halo Master Chief helmets. The talk ends with Jesse and Jeffrey agreeing to go fishing the next day. Uh, Jesse and Larry. Jeffrey decides to ransom the Larry's lounge sign, all the while still demanding an apology, despite the fact that Psycho Dad and Larry agreed it's the other way around. <coughs> the next day, Jesse and Tom are playing video games, but are interrupted by multiple switches such as Psycho Dad. Later, hold on, I got a text message. <coughs> okay, I don't even remember where I was. Later, Larry learns that Jeffrey is ransoming his sign, so he and Jeffrey could see it and issue an apology for the Kung Fu sketch. The family goes to a small amusement park where Psycho Dad, Larry, and Mom go on the bumper cars and drive go-karts. Uh, Jesse does not participate in either out of concern or, exasper or exacerbating his brain injury. That is, he reveals he has contracted mono, and in a separate vlog posted later in the day, shows all bad news. Jesse even has to miss going to a fancy restaurant with his family. Jeffrey sees the apology but claims it is not enough and also calls Jesse and Larry out for inviting him down for the last full day. He goes through with destroying the Larry's lounge sign as well as Jesse's couch, using an, ex an entire assortment of tools. While filming an episode of Chillin' and Grillin', Psycho Dad and Mom get into an argument, and the former then chucks and the former then chucks the house's Nintendo Wii into the lake from the upper floor deck, mistakenly believing that it was Jesse's and calling it a consequence for constantly playing, completely ignoring the fact that Jesse has mono and shouldn't be doing anything extraneous. This results in a huge argument involving Jesse, Larry, and Psycho Dad. Jesse, Larry, Psycho Dad, and Mom as Tom films the whole thing. Psycho Dad believes Jeffrey burned the couch and sign because Jeffrey and Larry provoked him. No, I keep calling Jesse Jeffrey. Psycho Dad believes Jeffrey burned the couch and sign because Jesse and Larry provoked him. A clear sign of favoritism. Jesse can't argue much throughout the video due to his spleen pain from his mono. And this is where the ow my spleen shit came from. That was Psycho Dad launches Wii. The first Psycho video that Jeffrey wasn't a part of. Jesse shows Larry the video of Jeffrey destroying the couch and sign. Larry is obviously upset about the sign, but surprisingly, Jesse isn't mad about the couch, that he actually hated it. The pair also can't understand why Jeffrey took a large wooden stick to the couch. Psycho Dad strands Jesse on an island in the lake to get him outside while Larry manages to fish the Wii out of the lake. To get back on Jeffrey for destroying his couch, Jesse gives away his Batman Arkham Knight game to a guy named Ivan. Jeffrey confronts Jesse on him for him giving away the Batman game while knocking something over in the process, angering Jesse. After arguing for about two minutes, Jeffrey, uh, Jesse says he's going to Los Angeles, and if Jeffrey goes into his room after their argument of when he's gone, Jesse will give Jeffrey his mono. After Jesse teases Jeffrey, he makes him go back to his room, and Jesse warns him once again. To protect against Jeffrey's wrath, Jesse escalates the conflict to the biological warfare by infecting everything in his room to ensure that if Jeffrey destroys something, he himself will contract mono. The video showing this act is set to a song about mono written by Juliet, which uh, Juli Juliet was actually the reason why Jesse 
got mono. Juliet had it and passed it on to Jesse. While Jesse is in LA, Jeffrey makes a vlog of him having access to his room with a surgical type mask on to prevent himself from contracting mono. He then opens up the window and turns on the fan to air out some of the infected air. After he ends the video, Jeffrey finds that Jesse has hidden the key to his room, disabling Jeffrey's actions to escape. Jeffrey covers Jesse's room with plastic wrap to piss him off. Jesse is not amused, but is not angry either. Many commentators have labeled this prank as Jeffrey's weakest one yet, with one commentator, commentator even stating that Pickle Boy has pulled better pranks. To get revenge, Jesse and Juliet team up and spray liquid ass on multiple objects in Jeffrey's room. Which, if, for those of you who don't know what liquid ass is, it's this spray that smells like shit. <laughs> it was beautiful. It works beautifully. The next day, Jesse is indisposed with mono, but has now gotten strep throat. So his girlfriend substitutes for the day. She also writes up a new song at 10 minutes called The Juggy Song. I'll always be a juggy. Jeffrey gives an update in which he states that he won't retaliate for the liquid ass prank until Jesse is a bit better and is unwilling to prank his girlfriend. He also shows off his new beer pong table. Jesse tries to make a truce with Jeffrey, which does not work. Jeffrey gets revenge on Jesse's prank by spraying liquid ass in Jesse's car. The following day, Jesse goes to clean up the car and, and dispose of the stench, <laughs> but he gets raided by Jeffrey when he shoots fireworks towards Jesse. Jesse escapes the attack moments later. Jeffrey s soon acts up again by swiping Jesse's July bill for his rent as a prank. Moments later, after Jesse and Psychodad argue about the problem, the bill was originally $315, but due to Jesse talking back rudely to Psychodad, an extra $300 was added, making it $615. <coughs> Jesse gets back at Jeffrey by switching up some ingredients at Jeffrey's meal. Jesse responds to more hate comments. That was Jesse responds to hate comments too. During a live stream, Jeffrey uses a fog machine to smoke out Jesse's room. Mom gets extremely pissed off at Jeffrey, who just continues laughing throughout the video. Even Psycho Dad thinks the prank is a bit overboard. That was Psycho Brother smokes out stream. Later, Jesse and Mom both decide they need to get away for the weekend, with Mom going camping and Jesse visiting Juliet. At this time, it is revealed Jeffrey got off scot free proving that Psycho Dad does indeed play favorites. Jesse also leaves Jeffrey with a parting gift by removing all of the keys from the latter's keyboard using a GameStop card in retaliation for the smoking of his room. Jesse packs up and leaves for Juliet, during the video the two share their first on-screen kiss. They had previously discussed doing this during the Welcome Back stream if they got enough views, but it never happened due to the deed toss and swatting. Jesse and Juliet do the whipped cream challenge. The same day, Jeffrey posts his long-awaited Q&A video. The next day, Jesse and Juliet do the makeup challenge, and later that day, hold the Juggies power regarding breakups. Jesse returns home, but makes a trip to GameStop shortly thereafter, the details of which are not disclosed. The next day, Jesse announces that he paid off his student debt, and later announces a PS4 and Xbox One giveaway, thus revealing the purpose of his GameStop trip the night before. Jesse along with Corn sneak into his parents' bedroom and steal the keys to the back house, hinting something is going to happen. It's later revealed that they want to crush Jeffrey's PS4 as payback for everything he's done to them. Jesse takes the back hoe out but finds he has trouble with controlling it. Psycho Dad catches him and kicks him off of it. Jesse goes over to Larry's house to talk to him for the first time since the North Carolina trip. Jesse admits to wanting to take and destroy Jeffrey's PS4 as payback for all the stuff he lost because of him but wanted to talk to Larry about it before. Larry suggests he does it to finally stand up to Jeffrey for all the shit he put on him throughout the years. I personally for Jeffrey destroying Larry's lounge sign, it is later revealed that fans made their own signs and sent them to him. Larry, at this point, doesn't care about Jeffrey anymore, since he has lost all respect for him. The two then discuss what they should do. Jesse, Larry, and Corn begin Operation Orange Crush. Jesse goes to Jeffrey's room and still says PS4. Larry brings his truck over and ties up the PS4. While bringing some weapons to deal more damage. <clears throat> With Corn recording, Jesse and Larry begin the plan. 
Corrin shows Jack the PS4 under the truck and he heads outside. Under, throat, under threat by Jesse, he and Larry tell him that this is for all the things he had to destroy or got psycho that destroyed in the past. Jesse runs over the PS4 and muster Jeffrey's anger and they proceed to smash it some more with the tools Larry brought over. Jeffrey tries to retaliate with his paintball gun but it gets jammed and they along with Corn drive off with the PS4. <laughs> Well, on two drives across the road. They then proceed to damage some more, satisfied and victorious that they finally got Jeffrey. Jesse spends the night at Larry's house out of fear of a reprisal from Jared, from Jeffrey, and possibly Psycho Dad. Psycho Kid crushes PS4. A furious Jeffrey finds the two PS4s and Xbox Ones for the giveaway and steals them from Jesse's room. He then curses against Jesse, Larry, and Corn for what they'd done. The next day, Jesse and Larry arrive back at the Ridgeway residence to install a deadbolt on Jesse's door to guard against the Jeffrey. <laughs> to guard against Jeffrey. When they arrive, Jeffrey runs to lock down the stolen consoles, but willingly surrenders them when he learns of the, the for Jesse's giveaway. He is also told that they stole his Batman statue, but they didn't destroy it and tell him its location before proceeding to install the deadbolt. Later that day, Jeffrey issues Jeffrey issues an apology. For stealing the consoles, not knowing their purpose, it reveals that his channel has reached 500,000 subscribers. He also says he'll do a couple of giveaways and has something special planned to celebrate 500,000 subs. One day, Jeffrey goes into Jesse's room to talk to Jesse about the console theft. After that, Jeffrey leaves the room and unknowingly to Jesse locks the door on the outside, so Jesse now has to go out the window to go into his room. To go to the other rooms. Psycho Dad soon discovers this and questions Jesse about it. Jesse says that Jeffrey is possibly at the right intoxication level to be blamed on. Jesse proceeds to lie to Psycho Dad by saying that Jeffrey was the one that installed the deadbolt. Psycho Dad charges into Jeffrey's room and throws his PS4 controller on the ground. Jeffrey had since gotten a new PS4 since the events of Psycho Kid Crush's PS4. After arguing about lying and Uncle Larry, they decide to get rid of the deadbolt. Days later, Jesse asks Psycho Dad to do a Q&A for the Juggies. The session goes well until Psycho Dad is asked his thoughts on being labeled a psycho, leading to him leaving the session in a rage. And that was Psycho Dad answers questions. That was another one that was like fucking 36 minutes long. After the disastrous aftermath of Psycho Dad answers questions, Psycho Dad forgives Jesse by embarrassing him on YouTube, and the former spends the day golfing with his friends and his son. We check something really quick, guys. Okay. After the disastrous aftermath of Psycho Dad answers questions, Psycho Dad forgives Jesse by embarrassing him on YouTube, and the former spends the day golfing with his friends and his son. So I'm going to finish reading this this last page and stuff, and then I'm going to end this one. Jesse and Uncle Larry install a key lock to keep Jeffrey from pranking him. Larry gets kicked out by Psycho Dad. Jesse then pulls a prank on Psycho Dad by making him believe that Juliet is pregnant. Psycho Dad doesn't enjoy the prank. Jesse then learns how to use the back on and convinces Psycho Dad to dig a hole. Jesse then pranks Larry by stealing his Batman statue and he pushes Jeffrey into the hole. After the pitfall prank, Psycho Dad busts down Jesse's door, trashes his room, and kicks Jesse out once again, this time possibly forever. Mom is also against Jesse, leaving Larry, Juliet, and Corn as his only allies. So this is the last part of this page, this back in exile. Oh, no. This one ends here. So I'll read this back in exile part, and then I'm gonna stop this one. Uh, Jesse gets kicked out of the house. Again, for the event of the pitfall prank. Jesse moves back into Uncle Larry's RV. Jesse suffers a nervous breakdown. Jeffrey posts his perspective of the event, as well as the aftermath, which shows Mom breaking down into tears. Jeffrey also reveals that his prank didn't work 100% because he still needs to talk to Uncle Larry. Jeffrey comes to Uncle Larry's to give Larry his side of the story. Jesse thinks Jeffrey is trying to turn him against Larry, which starts an argument between Jesse and Larry, which they eventually talk out, in which Larry reveals that he is f firmly on Jesse's side and does not trust Jeffrey and plans to talk to his mom. The next day, Jesse and Tom return to the Ridgeway residence, 
While Tom retrieves Jesse's possessions, Jesse leaves a parting gift in the form of repeating Jeffrey's plastic rap prank while this time doing it to Jeffrey's car. It's revealed that Jesse got a golden play button for surpassing 1 million subscribers. Jesse gets kicked out of Uncle Larry's, where he actually never did so, after the events of plastic wrapping Jeffrey's car, effectively making him homeless for a short period of time. Jesse reveals on Twitter that he is staying with Corn. Jesse, oh, Larry posts a video issuing a message to Jesse in which he expresses great regret over the previous day's events, apologizes, and invites Jesse back, starring, stating that at no point in the thrown out of Larry's video that the words get out were said. He also says that he will always be on Jesse's side and will never trust Jeffrey. Jesse and Corn go and obtain supplies so Corn can become a Twitch streamer. Jesse confronts Larry and Mom over Jeffrey wanting to sell Big Brother t-shirts. Adam. That out Jesse in a derogatory position, as well as over Larry kicking him out, which Larry states that he never did. Jesse issues a heartfelt apology to his entire family as well as his viewers. He states he will be staying with Corn for the time being because Corn is in his age group. Jesse and Jeffrey have their first confrontation since Jesse was kicked out. After some very tense negotiations, Jesse and Jeffrey reach a deal that Jesse will get 5% of the profits on the Big Brother shirts, and Jeffrey will get Jesse back in the house. Jesse and Corn are invited to Larry's house, not knowing that Psycho Dad Jeffrey and Mom were there. While they are eating, Mom and Larry attempt to convince Psycho Dad to allow Jesse back home, to which Psycho Dad numerously refuses. Surprisingly, Jeffrey agrees with Mom and Larry to allow Jesse back in the house. Psycho Dad still refuses. While everyone is about to leave, Psycho Dad has a change of heart and tells Jesse to get in the car. With hesitation, Jesse gets in and they head back to the house, ending Jesse's second exile from the household. So I'm going to wrap this one up here. I've read six pages of this so far for in this video, but I don't want this video to be too long, so I'm going to stop it here, and I'm actually going to do part two tomorrow. So I'm going I'm to call this the complete history of the Psycho series, so this is part one, and tomorrow you'll get the complete history of the Psycho series part two. So tomorrow's video will include the back at home redux, Carrie's departure, um, purchasing a house, the third Wii U destruction and job hunting, the runaway from the Ridgeway residence, the epilogue, and the epilogue. So that's all going to be tomorrow. So thank you guys for watching. If you'd like to subscribe, please do. If you don't want to, of course you don't have to. Um, I love each and every one of you. Thank you for sticking with me, and as always, I will see you tomorrow.